you guys oh, want to God. transition here? Let's do it. Anything in Nebraska? Here we go. Some dumb soul. football questions. It's hurt, always, me. hurt me. You can always hit us up in the YouTube comment section with your dumb football questions. This is from Willow C. Can you ask Jeremiah to talk about Nebraska football? When I got into football, Tom Osborne was the Nebraska head coach. There were no scholarship limits. The 60s saw college football really emerge in popularity. Uh, While I'm sure there's a number of factors that combine to make Nebraska a nice place, it doesn't evoke L.A. Miami vibes. Is the location a problem attracting recruits? Why why is Nebraska having a hard time getting back to their glory days? This can all be gone back and looked at at 2015. 2015, after the 2014 season, Bo Pelini was fired after winning another nine games. My entire career in Nebraska, we won no less than nine games. Some years we won 10. And the state convinced themselves that that wasn't enough. And the fans convinced themselves that playing in three conference championships in five years wasn't enough. And, Booney, you've seen this happen, too, where you you can see the narrative going like, well, we should be winning conference championships and winning national titles every year. Like, what's going on? And they fire Bo Pelini. They bring in Grandpa Mike Riley. Starts coming in, talking about hip, hip, hoorays and all kinds of nonsense, trying to change the culture, pendulum swing completely to the other side. Cali, the Calabrasca movement, right? There was this huge recruiting, like, bring all the kids from California, bring them all out here. Didn't work. They all left. It was too cold. Lost a bunch of games. Then we bring in the savior, Scott Frost from Florida. He comes in. I think he walks in here thinking, it's Nebraska. I'll win nine games because it's Nebraska, and I'm Scott. Doesn't work like that. Gets down. Everyone transfers out. And now we just we just suck. Like It's unfortunate. But it just shows you, you can have the greatest facilities. You can have everything. At the end of the day, these kids want to win. And that may change now with NIL a little bit. But, you know, over the last five years, Nebraska has not won football games. You win three games, four games, no bowl game. Recruits don't want to come. It's really easy as a new head coach. You can say, hey, I need you to make my vision go. That recruiting pitch works for two years. You're the fifth year head coach and you're still going, I need you to make my vision go. Yeah. No one's believing you anymore. Right. And that's what happened with both these coaches. They couldn't turn it around after two, three years. And so it's hard. It's impossible to recruit as a third year head coach if you're not winning football games. So yeah. haven't it's done not, it. It's not it's not cool anymore. It's Nebraska not cool football anymore. used to be cool. Now now this new facility though, boys, I walked through it. Wow. This really? thing is absurd. They made the weight room because they wanted the culture to be we all lift together. 150 guys can lift in this weight room at one time. It's a warehouse. It's a giant warehouse. Can they all do the same act? Can they all be like benching at the same time? How many racks are in there? I mean, at least 70. Shut up. Dude, I'm, I swear to God. Like, and they're all sword X, all put together. They have a they have a 20-yard a, a ramp that can go up and down based off the incline that's turf that you can run up it. Yep. Like, dude, it's... Can you poop on that incline? Probably. Slide it you right probably could. Down. Yeah, we'll get Willie. <laughs> um, oh, people figured it out. <laughs> oh, yeah. People, people definitely <laughs> knew they it They were quick to throw out a name. <laughs> yeah. Um, our former but, uh, teammates were yeah. loving it too by the way yeah i got some i got a few texts as well <laughs> so did I. um but yeah it's really cool i think the new facility is going to help it's an arms race in college football anymore it's an arms race for facilities it's an arms race for money so i think it'll help matt rules the g dylan rayola it's going to be a guy we're talking about on this podcast in three years about possibly being a top 10 pick with the the g- generational talent tag um i watched him practice for the first time and you just the dude's got it so there's my little rant on Nebraska football. What are you talking about? He's going to transfer out after this year. You just oh, said it. Stop, please. <laughs> it's going to be great. You're, he's going to be that. like, this was a bad idea. You got to remember, though, he's got dad. <laughs> he's got deep blood ties here, right? Dad played here. Like, there's some. I'm convincing myself more than anyone else. Money he's talks. Not he's not. Bullshit leaving. walks. Hey, there's Let's one see. thing the state has. It's money for football. So there are a lot, of school, a lot of schools that got money for football. <laughs> believe me. Dude, there's – I don't know if Nebraska is like this, but I've seen some stories about other schools that have paused their facilities work and the fundraising for facilities and say, hey, if you're going to donate money to something, throw it in the NIL fund before yeah. you throw it in the new Well, they're facility. getting smart. They're starting to realize that the minute you pay somebody a salary, they don't give a fuck what the building looks like. And I'm <laughs> surprised nobody's ever figured that out. Colleges are – immensely gross just stupid shit everywhere that you're like why do we even have that i don't know because somebody wanted to buy it to say we had it like 
you get to the NFL, my first NFL <laughs> weight room was the size of my basement. And I'm not even kidding you. Yeah. The ceiling was lower. You literally could not overhead press. And they were like, deal with it. There was four racks. They were like, deal with it. They don't give a shit. Deal with it. Like, you're like, okay. And they're like, we're paying you, aren't we? Yeah. What the fuck are you complaining about? You're like, yeah, I guess you're right. There's nothing. And then, so now you turn around and you're like, Boy, they really do waste a lot of money on stupid yeah. windows, fucking murals, a uh, barber can I, shop, can a I video get game room, posted on the wall, and I wanted graffitied, and it's like giant dude, TVs everywhere. Yeah, tell me I'm lying. Winter Park, people didn't realize this. There were oh no windows. God. There yeah. were no windows. A bunker. You Just never a bunker. saw the outside world <laughs> ever. You were like, it's and you never. I didn't notice it until like four months in. That's how crazy it is because they're paying you to shut your mouth. And they're like, hey, <laughs> I got a table and a chair for you to watch film. <laughs> shut up. You're like, all right, cool. I'm Dude, cool I can remember I, there was the days that I never through. saw the sun because you get into work. Zero. Dark. You would practice Left. inside because it was cold outside. And then you'd leave and it was pitch dark. black again. And you're like, Literally. Oh, I don't. Sun could have came up and went. Never would have known. Never would have known. I think, I think the Packers week. We were like that. It was the entire week, and then the game came, and I was like, oh, my God, that's the sun. I haven't seen it in <laughs> days. God, it's just so bright. <laughs> Seriously. Remember that that's game? Why, they that's were why like, the receivers are dropping passes yeah. left and right. <laughs> oh, God. The sun, it burns. <laughs> sun, it burns. <laughs> we had problems with drops that year. We did. <laughs> there was one culprit. Uh, Ken Button chimes in, and he says in the YouTube comments here, I like these guys, but... But it's crazy to me that they feel like football boils down to Mahomes versus the other quarterback. You'd think offensive linemen would value the entire team and not reduce them to two quarterbacks in a duel as they like to express. Just once, yeah, one of them should the have one. should have not blocked so they could see it was not all you, the quarterback. Do you want me to do this, Jay? Go. Do you want me to take this one? I, I got this. Listen. We wouldn't be saying Mahomes versus the world if he wasn't in the fucking Super Bowl every year. Okay. I'm going to be honest with you guys. You have to show us that you're good enough to beat him before we're going to let you fucking be called really, really good. People don't understand that. They're like, oh, you just talk about this one guy because this one guy has impressed us so much because you literally took his entire team away, made him get hit every fucking play, and he was still like, hey, I can do it. <laughs> you got nothing for me? Watch this. I can't tell you how incredibly awesome that is to watch, especially being a guy that, by the way, I watched the whole fucking unit because I was the one that would be like, hey, thought we were running a fucking dig out there. When did it turn into a slam? Oh, we're not. We don't know what we're doing. OK, cool. Hey, uh, running back, you going to step up and fucking hit somebody here. Your guy just blitzed and just destroyed the quarterback. We see everything. But when one guy can take everything on his shoulders and be like, OK, listen, I can stand here for a second. And then I'm going to have to run around everywhere and I'm going to have to jump off the ground and make myself parallel to the ground to get this ball away. And I'll still do it. And I'll smile about it and I'll laugh about it and I'll make it look really, really easy. And that's why the rest of us are like, wow, he's really good. And oh, by the way, when you fall on his ankle and he can barely walk, he's like, I'm good. What? I have an ankle problem. I had no idea. I can still throw the fuck out of this ball. So I dare the rest of the league and I'm challenging the rest of the league to be better. Be better, or I'm going to continue calling Patrick Mahomes the greatest. I'm well, sorry. okay, but how much of a how much of a team sport is football? It is a team sport, but there's the X defense factor, is phenomenal. There's X, there's X factors to every team, right? Like, yeah, football is the ultimate team sport, but when you have the best at the most difficult position, it it's an X factor. It's a complete game changer, right? Like you put let me let me think of a you put Gardner Minshew into Mahomes' seat last year. Do they win 10 games? No. Probably not. Right? So now you're talking about a team that, with a mediocre, middle-of-the-road quarterback, is not a double-digit win team. And then you put in one player, one singular player, 15, Patrick Mahomes. They're now a Super Bowl-winning football team. Mm -hmm. That's why we talk about him. Yeah. That's why you talk about him. And that's why you say duels with the other quarterbacks, because that's what Joe Burrow was. Right? And it, it was evident. Joe Burrow, when he's on that team for the Bengals, Super Bowl contenders. You take them off, they don't make the playoffs, right? Like, it's just that important. That position is that important in the NFL that if you have the guy or a dude, you're immediately in the hunt. And if you don't, you're not. Like, and it's why there's the rules for 
you can have you can have the greatest dude you can have the best defense of all time i don't care your defense could be the number one in the league if the other side has a shit quarterback tough titties man you're not gonna win you're, you're, you're not gonna win Eventually, Look at the jets. you're not gonna be able to score they had like one the of the jets best defenses. Had one of the best defenses ever Zach and they also Wilson. had a first round pick quarterback in the top five so it, it it com- this league comes down to quarterback play it really does and so that's why you say like yes i i appreciate the team and yeah it does take everyone to get there and it does take everyone to make sure that it's operating smoothly but at the end of the day when there's 90 seconds left on the clock and you're down by six points there's one dude that's going to make it happen or not and yeah. that's the quarterback also, and i think they had they had trent williams mic'd up this year at the super bowl i just saw it and he was like two minutes left patrick mahomes has the ball i don't feel good dude <laughs> literally Every yeah. single person says it. And that's the problem is like the fans put too much on everybody else. When you're like, dude, as long as you have a good defense and a solid quarterback, you're going to be just fine. Kansas City is a great example of that. Their defense is legit. At times, they're going to get beat. They are feast or famine. They're going to blitz the shit out of you. They're going to come after you. They know they have to put a ton of pressure on you because their offense wasn't putting up the numbers that they thought they should. Like at the end of the day, they're like, we got to come after these dudes. But then Patrick just comes out and goes, I'll make it right. There's so many teams that could be like that, but they're not because their quarterback is not a Patrick Mahomes who just walks in and goes, oh, there's your weakness. I'm going to go attack this guy now. And even if I have to do it any which way, like it's so incredible to watch. But yeah, we appreciate a lot of offenses. I just, what he does is so special. It's kind of crazy. Like if you, you know, you ever been to uh, the strip in Las Vegas and you see these multi-billion dollar buildings, they don't, they build those with our money as yeah. like, like, like people who are going and betting on sports. And so the, the smart bookmakers that set lines for sporting events, for instance, if all due respect, if the left guard is out and you replace him with a backup, the line doesn't move for that game. It's still, yeah. Oh, it's a three point you know spread. If Patrick Mahomes is out and you put in backup quarterback guy, the line moves by five, six, seven points. hundred percent. Because he's that influential. It's the That's most influential lot. position. Yeah. That's a lot. It's not even just about scoring. It's about turnovers. Right? Like you put backup quarterbacks historically throw more interceptions, right? Mm-hmm. Like fumbles, sack fumbles, sitting in the pocket too long. Like, yeah, it's just Yeah. It's the most important position on the football field. Okay, here's another dumb football question. This is from Michael Jenkins versus a regular car. <laughs> Michael Jenkins. Why is this something familiar? Mike, he's the former you're thinking about NFL Michael, wide receiver. Yeah, you're thinking about Michael Jurgens too from, sure, yeah. from Wake. Okay. Yeah, okay. He says, dumb question. When you get drafted, what are the rookie financial meetings about that NFL players go through? Like when they sit you down Once and a they week. talk about NFL yeah. players going broke. Like what are the financial meetings like? They uh, so when you're a rookie, you have to do what's called like the during the OTAs, you have to sit down once a week with these people. Rookie school, and you go through an hour to two hours a a week about learning stuff and how to protect your money. I will say this: when I came in the league, they were really, really silly about how they used to protect guys and what they would tell you about, what they would warn you about. But now they've gotten really behind the financials and like, hey, listen, we need to protect our guys. We need to teach them how to save their money. We need to show them how to save their money. They bring everybody in. They bring every single person that they can bring in to be like, please save your money. Be smart. At the same time, when I was in the PA, we used to try to lock up a lot of money that they would try to give you at the end of the year. So like the Madden checks would get locked up and they'd be like, we're going to dish these out four years down the road, five years down the road. So every year it was kind of like, you made this money, but we're going to save it for later. And at times guys would get really pissed about it, but it's really kind of cool when like five years down the road, you get a check for like 30 grand and you're like, all right, it's pretty cool. I'm cool with that. I mean, it's, they're trying to protect each other, but they go a little shock and awe initially too like they kind of go with the like all right you got drafted let's say that you made a you whoever they point like you're the fourth rounder here right like yeah how much okay your signing bonus was six hundred thousand, right it's like all right let's talk about how we're gonna spend that money right and they go through and they're like well what's the first thing and everyone's like car house like and then he goes wrong uncle sam right and they meet just boom they throw up the big number right cut it in half yeah and then they're like, all right, now what? Bought mama a new house. Boom, 100 grand, right? Like, And they just go through, and then at the end of it, they're like, well, now where's all your money? And like, they, like at the end of it, there's like 100K left, or there's like no 50, joke. Like 50K, because it's like, you got a new house, and you had to buy rent, and you had travel expenses, and this, and this, and the girlfriend wants to go on a trip. Like, So they kind of go shock and awe initially. to all, and, it, and it's good, because it does make you realize how fast it goes. 
right? Like if you try and live the lifestyle that you're watching the 10 year NFL vet live, like it'll go like that. And so that's kind of how they come out hot out of the gate with the, with it. Mutual um, funds, long-term right. ETFs. Oh dude, <laughs> they did it. They did it in our gym this year and they actually yeah, brought they, X they, up and X was yeah. like, they're like, X, what's the first thing you're going to buy? And he was like, nothing. It's <laughs> going in my bank. And it's they were like, appreciate 8% dude, in value over the course you, of if, 40 years. If you knew Xavier, he was like, no, really, I'm not, I'm not going to spend it. And, and so it's, when you look at the screen, it looks like the uh, family feud screen. Yeah. And so like, as you're talking, things are flipping over. And so he's like, literally like, what's first? And he's like, nothing. The guy's like, wrong taxes. Boom. <laughs> so I'm like, X is going to get pissed. And he's like, what's next? He's like a car. And X is like, no, man, I got a car. I'm good. And he's well, like, the- wrong. Boom! A car comes Dude. up, and I'm like, it's not the best. The anything. best is all the guys are like, yeah, yeah, but we'll get we'll get some taxes back at the end of the year, right? And Boone and I in the corner just start dying laughing. We're like, listen, what? boys, listen. I, I don't know what world you think you're stepping into, but tax refund is not in your vocabulary. L- not I, I just, yeah. Just ask, I just want to say just that. Ask your CPA how much the check is, and then just go sit down and say, just cut it, because you're not going to want to know. I remember playing in Frisco, and we cleared one third of our check. Like you only cleared one third of it. We used to sit around every Wednesday and be like, "Do you see this shit? Like, you seeing this?" And at the end of the year, one year, I got like a six figure you owe that was not starting with one, two, or three. And I was like, "Excuse me, are you out of your mind?" And they were like, "Yeah, we undertook out this year. Sorry, bud." I was like, "Oh man, I'm yeah. gonna kill somebody." Like you don't understand how much they're taking and how fast it goes, and then you got to pay your agent, and then you're like, "Wait a minute, did did my agent do all the work he should have done?" Snakes in the grass. Hey, you're quick. Hey, you're quick to be like, "Hey, dinner is on you from now on, Brody." Like you're always like, "Yeah, dinner's on you." I'm never paying for anything. Yeah, so like, yeah, that's another one. They're like, "Hey, you got to pay your agent," and then they like slip in there and your union dues, and then they like move on. Oh, they they move off quickly. Hey, go back to that one, the one that just comes out of my check. At least I have to write the check to my agent. Wait, how much? Or union dues like what 20 percent? grand 20 25 grand something oh, like so that. it's a flat it's a flat rate you yeah. have to pay but, every year 20 but you grand don't, a year per player yeah but you don't even here's the thing you don't have you the don't option. see it they no. just deduction well right? then like you it do just, come, it just comes don't lie. out of the check you, you don't have to be a part of the union but then again no one's ever done that yeah no one's not, ever not, not been a part so they go through that and then they go th- like but the big thing is they're just trying to talk about and then they go oh yeah in two years by the way you blew your knee out now you have nothing Right, so they try and go the shock and awe factor, but then they do bring in the hey, you should have a financial advisor. Here's our list of NFLPA certified financial advisors. You should get on with them. You should start investing your money properly, like getting your credit. Right, you'd be amazed how many of these guys have no credit. Right, or I mean, we had a guy that they did a credit and ended up that someone identity thefted him. This was my rookie year. It was our second rounder. Someone had identity thefted him like six years ago. Opened like ten credit cards under his name. <laughs> And now he had like 200 grand in credit card debt that he never even knew about. And so like he had to go back through that. So it starts talking about like building credit and all that type of stuff. And it's good stuff. The the hardest part is when you're in it, it's the last thing you want to hear. Very true. Like like when you're, you're a rookie in the NFL trying to make your dream go, right? You're trying to make this car go and you're trying to learn the playbook and assimilate into the locker room. And then you're sitting there on a Wednesday afternoon and the guy's like, okay, now what are we going to do about Monday day? You're like, dude, I just, I need to learn about six man protection. (laughs) I need to go with you. Like, it's just, it's such a hard thing because it's just the last thing on your mind because you haven't actually made a lot of that money yet. Right. They're talking, they're, they're forecasting like when you make it and it's like, dude, I got to make it still. Like I still have to do the steps. And so that's the hard part of just trying to find the right time to do this. To that point too, I feel like, the mistake a lot and you know you're freaking 22 years old you're, you're young you're, you're, you get a first yeah. round pick and in your mind you're you're not thinking oh i'm i'm gonna make this amount of money for the next few years but there's no guarantees that once i'm like 26 i might not make money anymore you're right. you're living your life as if oh this is my annual salary until i'm 40 and that's what's so old, messed right? up because not only that but no one ever said you're gonna make it this year like that's yeah i'm gonna be honest with you when you first get into the league, it's hard to think that like you're not going to last because you're like, well, I'm here and I'm working and there, you know, I'm working harder than this. Like you just don't see it, and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, you get blindsided and you're like, shit, 
Yeah. It's that year two. Sucks. It's year yeah, two. Dude. When you when you show back up year two, and if you're they're lucky enough to be you. on, and you're lucky enough to be on the same team you're on, you start looking around like, man, there's like six of us in here from that 25 person rookie school last year. Yep. Right. Like it's just it's amazing the second year when you come back for that first off season. You're like, holy shit, everyone's gone. Right. Like like it's a very eye opening feeling and I can remember it very well. Like there was only three undrafted guys still on the Chargers my second year from our class. And it was just like that's whoa. Wild. Like Dude, that's, that's how that's, that's how it was. That's the eye opening when you're like, Okay, I see how this league works now. But like year three it was like me and Crab. That was yeah. it. And I was like, shit, crab tree. By year We're three you start now. seeing draft picks. <laughs> By year three you start seeing draft picks gone. Yep. Right. You're like, Oh dude, that drive was drafted in the fifth. Shit, he's not here anymore. Right? Like it's just it's such a cutthroat industry. And that's when you start really being like, okay, I should probably probably make sure I'm putting this money in the right spot. Because yeah. I'm not gonna make a five hundred thousand dollar salary every and year for the rest of my life. It's hard, dude, because when you go out with all the other guys, they're established, they're made, that's, you're going to steakhouses, you're that's constantly, the number one that's the number hard. one thing that could really screw up a rookie is if they you start to fit running, in. they start running with the vet. And they want to fit in with the vet, right? They want to go to the nightclub and they want to go to the strip club and they want to go to the casino and they want to sit in the back of the plane and play the high level card games. Like, don't do it. Don't do it, man. Those dudes got 12 figures. Like, they're sitting in the bank, right? (laughs) Don't do it. Don't do it, it. man. My my first year covering the Vikings as like just a, a writer and a dot com, like radio host guy. I won't say there was a couple of Vikings veteran cornerbacks <laughs> that would, you know, the media would walk in for their 45 minutes and there would just be hundred dollar bills all over the <laughs> locker room floor yep. playing, playing dice. And you can, you can guess who was winning it. It's the guys who were making like $8 million a year that were it's it's like, crazy. It's the guys dude. That just, they just keep throwing money until they win. The rich yeah. get richer, like, that's man. The thing, at that point, like when you're, when you're in those rooms and that's what you don't understand, these guys will throw money until they win. Hey, yeah, right. like, seriously, we used to roll in the back, and there would be times the big rollers would come in, and I'd be like, I'm out. They'd I'm out. Like, You're staying. You'd be like, I don't have enough money. I don't have enough. And they would just pull out these fat wads and be like, give me the dice. You'd be like, oh, I was going to win today. Now I'm going to lose it all. Yeah, I mean, I remember I was like watching guys. I was like, oh, I'd love to learn how to play Tonk or Boo Ray or anything. They're like, got to buy in. I was like, I don't know how to play. They're like tough shit i was like that i'm definitely not playing like that was another one they wouldn't teach you they wouldn't teach you unless you bought it you had to watch because they do you'd have to just kind of watch and and then if as soon as you bought in you'd have a question they'd be like nope you're in it now bud figure it out on your own dude i made it one time i remember never i'm never doing this again first time i jumped in i was like i think i know how to play this right it was dice and i was like so as soon as you come in everyone looks at you you want five on the nine you're like whoa 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 whoa. i don't remember this part i don't remember this part wait why are you asking me the point's not and they're like Five on the nine, five on the nine. <laughs> Next thing you know, you got 60 bets out there and it's not a nine. And you're like, shit. Like, dude, it goes quick, man. You got to be, you got to think fast, move don't, fast. And if you ever forget point, if you ever forget bet. the point, you're in trouble. You are in trouble. I think the lesson we've learned here, if there's any young aspiring NFL offensive linemen here, don't, uh, bet. don't gamble. IR, IRAs are your IRAs, friends. IRAs, IRAs, <laughs> Roth, Roth IRAs. Roth IRAs. <laughs> 